Um, okay, uh, confession time. If you're new here, I normally talk about Leica cameras and I've been enjoying Leicas for over a decade. Recently, however, I tested the Nikon ZF and it made me realise that although I really love Leica cameras, it would be quite nice to have a few additional features. As such, I've just purchased a Nikon. Now the Nikon I went for was actually the Nikon F3. And in this video, I'm going to give you my 15 reasons why I just bought a Nikon F3, despite owning amazing cameras such as the like M3, like M6 and say like a R6. Do stay with me until the end for a few bonus tips and for any fellow Nikon F3 users, if I forget anything, please do comment your tips below. Hello and welcome, Matt here from MrLike.com. A quick thanks to my sponsor for this video, my awesome patrons. If you'd like to support the channel and for additional content, please click the link below. Okay, jumping straight in to my 15 reasons. Number one, if you enjoy shooting cameras like Hasselblad's TLR cameras, maybe the Mamiya RZ, all of these cameras have a waist level viewfinder, which means you can look down into your camera and it gives you a completely different shooting experience to having the camera up to your face. Now, I think this is particularly good for street photography as it takes the pressure off you eyeballing your victim in the street. If you're like me and you feel a bit self-conscious doing kind of face-to-face -face street photos at close distances. Other benefits of waist level viewfinders. Number one, great for tripod work. Not really what I bought it for. Number two, low angles often look more visually appealing than say eye level photos because we're used to seeing most photos shot at eye level. So if you shoot people in the street lower down, it normally has a more powerful look. And you can even hold the camera upside down if you want to say shoot over a fence or have overhead type shots. Quick word of warning, it's not as easy to do portrait orientation photos with a waist level viewfinder because the image is back to front. So you find yourself kind of pointing the camera in the wrong direction as I found when I was recently shooting in London. Number two, SLR cameras pair really nicely with rangefinder cameras because rangefinder cameras are often limited by either a 0.7 meter or one meter close focus distance. Here you can see a 28mm scope bar lens on both my Leica camera and my Nikon camera. On the Leica camera, it's limited to 0.7 meters, but on the Nikon camera, I can get almost as close as 0.2 meters. Number three, the Nikon F3 is definitely up there with the best film cameras ever made, such as my Leica M3. And did you know that it was made for over 20 years? It's hard to imagine a digital camera being made for 20 years in a digital era. Number four, if you like mod cons, the Nikon F3 offers you the light meter, self timer, double exposure, shift release lock, just to name a few. This all sounds normal to maybe other SLR users, but if you're used to very basic Leica cameras, which I normally love, it's quite nice to sometimes have a few modern comforts. <laughs> Five, now the price of the non-HP Nikon F3 is actually cheaper than the popular high point, the HP version. Most people go for the high point, but if you don't wear glasses, you don't really need the high point version. And so then you can use the, the standard F3, which is the one that I got. I must say a huge thanks to Mary who wrote to me and said, would you like to buy my F3? And that was the reason for buying this camera and also making this video. I just wanna show a quick story so you don't make the same mistake this is a sad story so there's a chance it may bring a tear to your eye when you buy a new film camera the first thing it's important to do is obviously check that it works so the first thing i did was fire the camera at each shutter speed and then listening to sound see if it sounded about right kind of a faster shutter speed or a slower shutter speed i went through all the shutter speeds and checked that they all sounded about right i then checked the manual shutter fired okay and then i checked that the self timer fired okay and it all seems pretty good. Now the moral of this story is before you fire the camera at all the different shutter speeds and so maybe fire 20, 25 photos, perhaps open the camera first and check there's not a fresh roll of film inside. There was a fresh roll of portrait 160 inside the camera and I just wasted 25 frames because there was no lens on the camera when I was doing the, the shutter tests. A very emotional time, I'm sure you can all relate. Okay, back to the list. Number six, image quality. Now, as fellow Leica users will know, we love our Leica cameras because of the amazing Leica glass. However, as you probably also know, I also use a lot of Voigtlander glass and I'm very happy with the images. 
Now what you may not know is Voigtlander lenses are also available in Nikon F mount and so I can get the same Voigtlander glass experience even with my Nikon F3. One big advantage of the Voigtlander lenses is they're often smaller than their similar Nikkor lens counterparts and in some cases you can get exactly the same image quality with a Voigtlander SL lens as you can with a Voigtlander M out lens. One example is the Voigtlander 90mm f2.8 APO where I've got it both in M mount and in F mount so I can get exactly the same photo with say my F3 and Leica M3. Talking of photos, here are a few sample photos shot in London when I was doing a test roll a few days ago. These photos are shot with the Voigtlander lenses as mentioned. All photos were shot with the waist level viewfinder and yes I will do a full behind the scenes video using the F3 on my next trip to show you how I'm using the camera and more sample photos. Okay, on to number seven. Now this is not F3 specific, but if ever I buy a new film camera, it doesn't matter how cheap or expensive it is, it always inspires me to shoot more film and I can't think of a better reason than that. Number eight, now if you wear glasses, as I say, the Nikon F3 High Point HP is the most popular. However, if you want the smaller, lighter, non-HP version, you can use the viewfinder diopter, which fits the Nikon FM2. So I have done a video on diopters in the past. I'll try and link it at the end if I can. Number nine, now like with the benefits of using Leica M-mount cameras, where the mount has been around since the 1950s, the Leica F-mount also offers a huge range of lenses. You can pretty much use all Nikon F-mount lenses on your Nikon F3 as long as they've got the manual aperture ring. So this means you can use the autofocus AFD lenses, but you can't use the G-series lenses because the G-series lenses don't have the aperture ring. As someone that used to shoot Nikon before discovering Leica around 10 plus years ago, I still have quite a few Nikon F-mount lenses, so it'd be good to try some of those out on my F3. Number 10. Now I know many fellow Leica users would never consider using a Nikon lens because they want the Leica look from the Leica glass. Did you know that it's possible to convert Leica R lenses into Nikon mount? So I converted my Leica Summicron 50mm f2 R lens to Nikon F mount. So I can then use it on my Nikon F3 or any other Nikon F camera. And then if you ever watch the Grainy Days channel, you may know that he's converted his 35 to 70 Leica R lens also to Nikon and he used that on that bike trip he did coast to coast. That lens is absolutely stunning. It's one of the best R lenses and I have done a review on that lens too. Number 11, often when using vintage film cameras, one of the biggest problems is being able to see to focus. No fear if you buy a Nikon F3 because they made over 20 focus screens for the Nikon F3 to suit all types of photography. The K screen is the most common where you've got your split image and micro prism center spot. A little bit similar to using a rangefinder. Number 12. Okay, you might be able to relate to this one. Have you ever been on a shoot with your film camera and then the battery suddenly dies? I remember this happening to me with Mamma Mia 6 when I was out walking in the Lake District a few years ago. Now the Nikon F3 does require batteries. It takes two LR44, the same as the Leica M6, for the electronic shutter. But if the batteries do die, which is unlikely because they normally last like more than a year, you can use a mechanical shutter release lever on the front of the camera, which doesn't require batteries, so it gets you out of those emergency situations. Number 13, this is for you fellow street photographers. Do you ever line up your camera anticipating a shot, press the shutter, and then something more amazing happens after you've taken your shot? You quickly fumble with your camera trying to advance your film, and it's too late, the person has walked past. Fear not, with a Nikon F3 you can buy a Nikon MD4 motor drive and that allows you to shoot at an eye-watering 6 frames per second. It reminds me a little of my Nikon F5 video if you saw that one. Okay, count me down. One, two, three, go! I'm trying to show my smoking barrel. Number 14. Now, as much as we love our Leica cameras, some of you have noted that over time, Nikon cameras normally just keep on working, whereas Leica cameras often need servicing. That is one beautiful thing of Nikon cameras. They are very reliable compared to some other cameras. 
Number 15, the Nikon F3 followed the F and the F2, and it was the last manual focus professional body made by Nikon. It's smaller and lighter than the F4 and the F5 that followed, but it's not as small as cameras like the FM2, FE2, FM3A. With that said, bonus tip number one. If you want a small light Nikon SLR camera packed full of features, I'd recommend getting the FM2 or FE2, which both offer 4,000th of a second shutter speed and 250th of a second flash sync speed. If you want the waist level viewfinder experience, you will need to look at the F, the F2 or the F3. Tip number two, you don't need to wind the camera onto zero before you fire your first photo. You can get 38 frames per roll, you just need to be aware that the first two frames on every roll of film are going to be limited to an eighth of a second, regardless of what settings your camera is set to. So because of that, you just need to set your aperture so you get the correct exposure. As mentioned, I do have a POV style Nikon F3 video planned. So if you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. And for more Nikon videos, click this playlist next.